So thank you everyone for attending today. Um, as Sarah mentioned, my name is Amy Joe. I'm the Senior Process Engineer uh, for the Drug Product Process Development Group at Omega Therapeutics. So today I'll be speaking about a case study and building an LMP process for um, Omega platforms. Um, just a little bit of background. Many of you guys probably know already, epigenetics is the study of phenotypic changes of the genome rather than sequence-based changes. And at Omega, we look at epigenetics as working through a universal operating system that we can manipulate to therapeutically control gene expression. Um, because despite etiology, um, disease can be seen as an issue of gene dysregulation. So Omega's vision is to develop a platform where we leverage the natural epigenetic mechanisms of the body by tuning gene expression pre-transcription to treat disease. And to do that, we um, use the Omega Epigenomic Programming Platform, um, which is a deterministic drug, de drug development platform that allows us to prospectively engineer programmable mRNA therapeutics. Um, in the form of these omega epigenomic controllers or OECs. Using these OECs, we control cellular programming and restore gene expression back to homeostasis. By leveraging our deep and continually improving understanding of genomic architecture in combination with our computational expertise in machine learning and AI, we can rationally and rapidly design these OECs. The platform has a computational engine, which allows us to identify and target specific and unique DNA sequences um, of regulatory elements or epigenomic zip codes, which we'll call epizips, um, within discrete chromatin looping regions um, known as insulated genomic domains or IGDs. These IGDs house genes and those regulatory elements. We then design and op optimize these controllers, OECs, that lay epigenetic marks in these zip codes to durably tune the expression of the target genes in our cells and tissues of interest. What this means is that we can develop a programmable medicines platform for a large range of therapeutics um, and indications which creates a potentially much safer new class of mRNA therapeutic to control disease biology by tuning gene expression without the need for nucleic acid sequence changes. Um, this now provides a key advantage to some of the other modality approaches that are continuing to be developed. Um, the main advantage being that uh, specificity, tunability, and durability in gene expression control um, as well as its implications in um, the ability to control targets that may be highly autoregulated or difficult to drug traditionally or in other methods. Um, additionally, we can target multiple genes given a thing, single therapeutic, as well start looking at epigenetic states of cells and cellular regeneration. Although Omega is a delivery agnostic company and has plans to explore additional delivery modalities over time, currently we are using lipid nanoparticles to deliver this therapeutic. And um, as you can see in the schematic here, um, by using mRNA to encode for this controller, we can encapsulate it into lipid nanoparticles and use the um, endosomal pathway, um, allowing it to create a versatile platform product. So you see that once the mRNA is now translated um, into that OEC to have its um, impact on gene expression. So far, we've mapped and validated thousands of epizips across IGDs which allows for rapid design of OECs for diseases and conditions under consideration. And that leads to our current portfolio, which shows a breadth of applications ranging from oncology of different tissues, such as liver and lung, um, different uh, targets and indications within those target tissues, 
um, such as pulmonary fibrosis and liver regeneration, as well as monogenic diseases such as hair follicles and alopecia. Although the therapeutic is a platform system, effective delivery to these intended targets becomes much more composition and formulation dependent. And it's in the process development of these specific different LMPs that will be the focus of this talk today. Um, I'm sure I don't have to belabor to this audience that process development has the job of bridging the gap between the R&D focused thinking of formulations teams um, in animal studies and in vitro, and the operations focused thinking of manufacturing teams. With such a broad scope of work and tests to get from one to the other. Um, but today we'll take a moment to consider the earlier side, looking at defining and understanding process parameters and product characterization. Um, and even more specifically, looking at mixing conditions and their impacts on size, PDI, and encapsulation efficiency, both, both immediately post-mixing and with further processing. Um, one of the main goals of these experiments, and especially for our team in general, is to develop a platform LMP process to complement the Omega platform mRNA payload. Um, and more specifically, to look for a um, development of a platform method of experimentation that would allow for more efficient process development based on the differences we see from formulation to formulation between projects. And to do that, further investigate using the blaze as a system to achieve these goals. Um, in this study, we um, designed a fractional factorial DLE design of experiments through the software jump to test four different parameters, formulation, starting mRNA concentration, um, total flow rate, and the flow rate ratio. From there, we also calculated the starting ethanol lipid concentration as an additional um, factor to compare to. Um, again, using the blaze, we have two different mRNA constructs with which we use to create two different formulations. One formulation is an established formulation using a different manufacturing platform, but has that we've scaled down for further development and understanding. Formulation two is a developing internal formulation that we have been using to establish a platform process and gain better expertise and insights into critical process parameters. Um, the lipid composition and the N2P ratios were already previously determined by our formulations team and something we considered set parameters. For the Blaze, we use the NextGen 500D cartridge uh, for its capability of inline dilution, but also for the fact that were we to scale this up to GMP, this cartridge would be the closest, if not identical, to those used in larger scale systems and an extra variable that we can um, already have set. So for this DOE, there was a set of 10 different experiments. Um, the mass of mRNA um, in each batch was held constant for each run, um, which does result in different final volumes out of the mixer, but we wanted to hold the batch size constant. The total flow rate was ranged from 90 to 115 mils per minute. Um, with the guidance from PNI that for this cartridge, um, the minimum flow rate to get complete and good mixing would be around 90 mils per minute. So we wanted to see the sensitivity of that for our um, different formulation. And the flow rate ratio ranged from two to four. Um, as mentioned earlier, we varied starting mRNA concentration and used that in conjunction with the flow rate ratios and the formulation and the P ratios to calculate starting ethanol of a concentration. Um, for the particles produced with all the 10 of these runs, we focused on size, PDI, and encapsulation efficiency for now as a measure of stable particle formation. Although the mixing parameters were the main focus, um, the particles were 
further process through TFF to freezing with the process parameters kept as constant as possible for all the batches. Um, so um, again, although the mixing volumes may have been different although because the batch sizes were the same, those processing times may have varied um, batch to batch. However, the actual parameters of um, flow rates and the shear rates were kept as constant as possible. The inline dilution here was done through the blaze um, at a ratio of one to one. And the suspension then went through a TFF step to buffer exchange to that final freezing buffer before the cryoprotectant sucrose was added. Um, samples was, were filtered and then frozen. So samples were taken post inline dilution, um, post uh, cryoprotectant addition and filtration, and then post one freeze thaw cycle. Um, so looking at the data from these 10 runs, um, we can see the size and PDI graphs up top, then castellation efficiencies um, down at the bottom for formulations one and formulations two. In the x-axis, we see um, minus signs for the lower end of our ranges for the DLE and plus signs for the upper ends of our ranges with, sorry about that, um, zero for the midpoints. Within each um, cluster, we see three different bars that relate to that sample taken out of the blaze post inline dilution, followed by the sample taken post TFF and sucrose addition, and then finally freeze thaw cycle. So looking at overall trends, we see um, an overall increase in size um, with increasing ammonite concentration and freeze uh, flow rate ratio. Between formulations, we see that formulation one um, seems to have a little more variability with further processing than formulation two. But overall, in terms of a general trend of that size increasing, um, it stays the same. Um, we, for encapsulation efficiency, we see a decreasing trend. Um, and again, that same trend for formulation one and two, what we also see is that from mixing to TFF, during that processing step, we see an increase in encapsulation efficiency in a lot of our sample. Looking a little closer, um, and more deeply, what we notice is that, especially for formulation two, if we go from this minus minus sample to minus plus, suggesting a change in flow rate ratio at the same mRNA concentration, we see a much um, lesser change in size as when comparing um, a change in the mRNA concentration from the low to upper range. Obviously, this is range dependent, um, but still it does seem like mRNA concentration is a much more impactful factor in terms of size. Another thing we noted was that encapsulation efficiency for this um, highest uh, range side for mRNA concentration FRR in both cases was a decrease from TFF to freeze thaw. Um, which suggests that maybe there is less freeze thaw stability once we go to lower encapsulation, but also higher um, mRNA concentration than FRR. I say this with the caveat that um, obviously there are a lot of steps from mixing to freeze thaw. And so whether we can directly and truly um, strongly correlate a mixing condition to freeze thaw impacts um, is something to further be explored, but something we noted in this one. Um, so I mentioned a couple times before that we did an additional calculation of trying to calculate the lipid concentration in, in the ethanol um, before mixing. And one of the key reasons that we decided to do that calculation was to consolidate and combine 
FRR and the mRNA concentration into a potential single variable that we could plot against these um, size, PDI, and encapsulation efficiency to do a more direct um, comparison of the trends. And what we see is that for size and PDI, we see the same increasing trend with increasing concentration. Um, but between formulations, no real significant difference noted, at least for these two formulations in these runs. However, it gets interesting once we go to encapsulation efficiency, where we see a clear difference in slope between formulation one and formulation two, um, although still seeing that kind of decreasing trend. And what that means is that formulation two, this blue line, seems to be a little more sensitive in terms of encapsulation efficiency to the concentrations of the starting materials. Whereas formulation one, um, although starting lower and at lower um, encapsulation efficiency overall, tends to be a little less sensitive within a range. Obviously, um, that theoretically makes sense in that there are differences in N to P ratios and lipids in, in general, um, but something we were able to show in just 10 experiments. So um, I put this post TFF graph down here as well, just to show that as we noted, the encapsulation efficiency tended to go up in almost all cases post TFF, seeing that shift in slope, especially for formulation one. So in this summary table here, many of you may have noted that of our four parameters, we really hadn't mentioned total flow rate so far. Um, and that's because there was no significant impact for uh, total flow rate on size PDI or encapsulation. And this follows in line with um, the guidances that PNI had provided that 90 mils per minute is a good starting point um, for a minimum flow rate needed for proper mixing and good particle formation. Um, another way to show that would be through jump using their um, prediction profiler, where you see the TFR in this middle here show fairly straight lines as it relates to size PDI and encapsulation efficiency. Um, again, from jump here, we can start breaking down which of the parameters really seem to have the most significant impact. And as mentioned, mRNA concentration seems to be that factor for all three cases of size, PDI, and encapsulation. Um, FRR was also significant for PDI and size, um, although not so much for encapsulation. With that being said, the reason was for those um, changes and differences in slope as shown in the previous slide for the different formulations, causing a lot more noisier data more difficult to fit with a single line versus the other two. And that's also a reason why JUMP seems to um, put significance in formulation for size and PDI that wasn't seen in a more direct graph. Um, because if you can see, especially for PDI, that one formulation is grouped kind of in the upper end of the range versus the lower end of the range, which is what they consider more impact on formulation versus again here, were we not to have color coded the two formulations, it becomes a lot noisier a graph, a lot harder to fit in a single line. Um, with that being said, with mRNA uh, concentration being the most impactful factor, um, we find room for uh, need for further exploration and optimization to maximize this value, um, especially while maintaining that high encapsulation efficiency. Uh, because practically speaking, um, the lower concentrations means much higher volumes leading to challenges in scale up. Um, and I noticed in, in the previous uh, presentation before me that in their case, the encapsulation efficiency tended to trend the opposite way which I found interesting and um, something I look forward to exploring as we look at different formulations in our lab at Omega. Um, so that's it for the data set, um, but I did wanna take a moment to um, talk about the Blaze and how it functioned as a mixing system for um, this work. 
Um, it had, I wanted to highlight a lot of the great benefits it had not just for this work, but also in helping build up internal capabilities and understanding in our lab in general. Um, the ease of um, setup and operation was by far the biggest pro. The software is very intuitive. Users can easily be brought up to speed and making very consistent particles. Um, not to mention that the range and scale from benchtop to GMP um, and a lot of the background work that's already been done by PNI took out a lot of the scale up development considerations um, that allowed us to focus further on process steps and parameters and things more relevant to our specific formulations rather than um, some of the technical mechanical changes. The ease and simplicity of the software that was um, it is a great benefit um, can sometimes be a potential limitation from a troubleshooting perspective, but overall that quick startup really has been invaluable to us. Um, the single use cartridge system definitely minimizes the need for cleaning and any cons uh, concerns of wear and tear, especially with something as fragile as a microfluidic system. Um, but sometimes testing those different mixing conditions becomes um, a little more costly uh, quickly and something that we had to take into consideration and sometimes limited our ability to do more in-depth studies. Um, as shown previously, the total flow rates from 90 to 115 mils per minute showed very little impact on size PDI encapsulation, but some of the flow rate limitations per pump and per line limited some of the ratios and dilution capabilities we could uh, really play with. However, in most cases, we found that the ranges in de um, as designed were more than enough to make consistent LMPs for our current applications and our current project. Um, and of course, although each formulation needs may be different, we found that the Blaze to be a, um, or to show a great potential as a system for LMP production, both in development and beyond. Um, so with that, I hope this presentation was able to provide some insight into the work being done at Omega Therapeutics and the capabilities the Blaze has allowed for my team so far getting started. And I wanted to thank the organizers again for inviting me to speak and thank you to everyone in the audience for your time and attention. Um, I'd be happy to take any questions.